I'm going to be talking to Dr. Joanna Wong, who is Assistant Professor at the Department of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering at the University of Calgary, because her team is part of Alberta Innovate's uh, Carbon Fiber Grand Challenge, when the uh, objective is to find a way to turn bitumen from the oil sands into a cheap form of carbon fiber. So welcome to the interview, Joanna. Thank you, Mark. I'm happy to be here. Now, the question I ask uh, the folks at Alberta Innovates when I, when I talk to them is always, do you think that you'll be able to come up with a, you know, cost-effective uh, process for turning bitumen into carbon fiber? Well, first thing is to look at the richness, uh, the chemical richness that is available in the Alberta uh, oil sand bitumen. And for a long time, we have been burning it off um, rather cheaply, uh, simply for energy. And this is probably not, this is not the first um, study or idea to, to bring uh, what was usually known as such a uh, rich, carbon rich waste product and to upgrade it into something more valuable. So definitely, I, uh, there, there are, uh, I do believe that there are technical paths towards making a commercially viable product out of uh, into, say, carbon fiber. It's just a matter of how and um, at what cost. Right, and we should point out that a barrel of bitumen, uh, the part that you're talking about or you're working with it, are the asphaltines, the heavy bottom of the barrel, which is uh, in a barrel of heavy crude oil, which is what bitumen is, uh, you don't have those bottoms in a, like say light sweet crude, the kind that gets produced down in the shale fields of Texas, for, for example. This is a very unique, unique resource. Can you give us uh, just a brief overview of the research that your team is doing, please? Okay, so we are addressing some of the uh, fundamental scientific questions uh, regarding the um, both the chemical, the chemistry of uh, the actual teens, as well as the processing behavior. So I'm working with a team of um, two other professors and a research associate here at the University of Calgary. Um, and we each um, have expertise in different areas. Uh, I've been working with um, Dr. Jeff Van Humbeck he, um, in chemical engineering, and he specializes in uh, fractionizing, fractionating these actual teams. So what we don't understand is whether uh, all of the actual teams are equally um, good for processing into carbon fiber, or whether certain fractions, like if we have to remove um, heavy metals or sulfur, whether that would improve the quality of carbon fibers that we're able to get. I'm also working with Dr. Milana Trifkovich in chemical engineering. Um, she is um, specializing in rheology. So really we need her expertise in just looking at how this uh, really thick kind of syrupy material can be spun into a long fiber. And um, for, for my part, we are actually working on developing the melt spinning process as well as the thermal treatments to convert those different fractions that we receive along the way um, in combination with the re rheological characterization into producing uh, hopefully a high quality carbon fiber. So I, I guess we should point out for our viewers that not all bitumens are the same. Uh, they come from different fields, they have different chemical qualities. And so if I understand your research correctly, you want to identify uh, which types of, of asphaltine in which types of bitumen are the best for uh, turning into carbon fiber. Have I got that correct? That is correct. Excellent. Now, um, and we should also point out that the, the process for this is to, is to heat up the bitumen a little bit until it becomes almost like a gel and then spin it rapidly. And so that you spin off these uh, fibers that then become uh, carbon fiber, you know, are, are I don't know how they're assembled into the material, but glued together or some kind of resin, and then it becomes the material carbon fiber. Is that correct? Um, well, it's a bit more complicated than that. So we can we can uh, melt spin an asphaltine into an asphaltine fiber, at which point it has to undergo this thermal treatment first to get rid of um, say any of the nitrogen, hydrogen, um, oxygen molecules that might still be in that asphaltine, we essentially get a carbon fiber. However, um, this carbon fiber, carbon has various uh, forms. It can be amorphous, it can be in graphite form, it can be in diamond form. And what we really want to see in a carbon fiber is that graphitic form. And this, to achieve that kind of structure, we need to really heat it to really high temperatures, um, as high as say 3000 degrees Celsius. Um, maybe you can achieve it probably a little bit lower. Um, and uh, so, so what, 
we're, we're trying to achieve is to get that graphitic form in from the asphaltine fiber. So when you say graphitic form, you're, you're talking about graphite, essentially, yes. is that that's what you're, you're looking to get. And the 3000 degrees that you're working with in the lab, will that also translate into the commercial process where it also has to use high temperatures? Um, currently, the commercial products made of well, carbon fibers are currently made from PAN, uh, polyethyl nitro, as well as pitch. And both of these processes require this additional high temperature treatment, um, often not as high as 3000 degrees, depending on the quality they, they uh, require. You can probably stop at about 1700 um, or so, but those are just details. Right. And so as I understand it, phase two of this challenge, and there are three phases, but phase two is essentially uh, takes place in 2022. And uh, what are the prospects for, for your team completing their research and, and coming up with uh, uh, the next, uh, you know, qualifying for the next phase, which uh, starts next year? Well, I think the, uh, the goals that are set out for Alberta Innovates phase two program, they are reasonable. So there's the goal of trying to, um, from, at a lab scale, produce about 10 grams per day of this material. And so that within, uh, that's reasonable within the scope of the lab's uh, cap capabilities. But what is um, still really unknown, and this would really uh, be critical towards advance to phase three, is whether we're able to get those material properties from the uh, asphalt team material. And at this point, they still, we're still in the process of characterization of uh, the, the uh, fibers. Now, uh, Dr. Wong, uh, one of the things, you know, there are 12 other teams uh, in this phase, and some of them are outside of Canada, but there are three from the University of Calgary. And it sounds like uh, everyone's working on a different angle on this, so trying to solve some of the science issues around using a bitumen as, uh, to make carbon fiber. It sounds like by the time the phase three is over, we'll know a whole lot more about the qualities of bitumen and the ability to use it in manufacturing processes than we do now. And that sounds like it could have all sorts of uh, implications for not just carbon fiber, but other kinds of materials that might be made out of bitumen. Oh, definitely. The more we, we know about this material, um, for, um, for my lab um, in particular, we've already spun off like uh, an idea um, just by working with these asphalt materials to try to make a different type of uh, material, not carbon fiber, but rather a carbon, carbon matrix composites in using these asphalt products. How unique is this bitumen? I mean, are there other, you know, sort of competitive materials? You mentioned pitch and, and uh, you know, I've, I've had, uh, uh, I remember an engineer one time, we were talking about this and he said, why don't they just use natural gas? That seems like cleaner and, and, uh, and, and perhaps uh, cheaper. But is there something really unique about bitumen that sets it aside as a, a possible feedstock for material manufacturing? Well, the major competitor for bitumen in this space would be the, um, the coal-derived asphaltines. And I know there's different groups, um, particularly in China, that are working on this. And I think it's really just uh, based on our location of uh, what we have here. Um, from what I understand, the asphaltines that we have here in Alberta, they have uh, larger molecular weights uh, so that they may, in fact, uh, be more conducive towards being melt spinnable and produce a better, more organized fibers. Um, unfortunately, we also have the disadvantage of having higher rates, of higher impurities. So it's um, it's kind of a trade-off, really. So it's really all up in the air uh, if one material could be is better than another. And I guess that that's one of the uh, things that we'll know after all of this research is finished is is whether in fact uh, bitumen does prevent provide advantages uh, over some of these other materials. Yes, that's correct. Well, Jonah, thank you very much. Good luck uh, to your team in the in the challenge, and uh, we're looking forward. I know I talked to Alberta Innovates. They think by the end of 2024 there will be a commercial process. Uh, to turn bitumen into carbon fiber and a fantastic opportunity for Alberta. So we're all, we're all cheering on your work. Thank you, Michael. It's great being here.